Hello, this is our Unit 4 Test Remediation. Um, we're going to go over the most missed questions to prepare you for retaking the Unit 4 test. So our first most missed question was from the poem, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. Um, question 11 was most missed. And the question is asking you to read the lines from the poem, what wealth the show to me had brought, and determine what the metaphor is, or what the meaning of the metaphor is. So if we take a look at the whole poem, I did highlight where that was. Um, you need a little bit more than just the line, of course. You need to really understand what's going on in the poem itself. Um, but if we take a look at the actual line what wealth the show to me had brought and if it's saying that it's a metaphor well it's a, a comparison right without using like or as so our metaphor dealing with the show um, and the wealth that the show had brought so what exactly is that and what does that have to do with the poem itself um, and when he's writing about I wondered lonely as a cloud you know, if you re look back through everything, um, stanza by stanza, lots of imagery, right? And it really has to do with, um, as he gets to the end in this moment, this show of the daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, the show of the stars twinkling, right? So it's, it's a wealth right there in the show. Um, it's not monetary wealth, so we should be able to eliminate some of the options as far as um, equating it with gold or valuable as money or signifying wealth. The show itself and nature, <clears throat> his fondness is the, the memory, right? So D is the correct answer. The speaker sees the daffodil's beauty as a priceless memory. And if you continue after with what wealth the show to me had brought, for oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And that's really where we understand that that has to do with the memory, right? Flashing upon that inward eye. All right, next um, we go and switch gears into another poem, Fern Hill by Dylan Thomas. And this was a, a one we focused on in class. Um, this one was a little more lengthy, so I have a part of it on this slide and then on the next slide, and I just want to show you which questions we're looking at for this one. Um, question 16, and it's asking about how the imagery affects the poem. So I did highlight a little bit within those lines, and nothing I cared at my sky blue trades that time allows in all his tuneful turning, so few and such morning songs. And so again, just making sure you're understanding the whole content of the poem um, and realizing you know, the, the imagery and its effect here, what I highlighted again, and nothing I cared that time allows. So if we look at our options, it describes a boy singing in the bright morning. It creates a sense of everlasting summer. It portrays time as a character in the poem. It points out that childhood is short-lived. And really one of our key components in that question is affect, how it affects the poem. So we really do need to understand it as a whole, not just in isolation with those lines. So if we look back, Fernhill is really um, the speaker reflecting on being young and carefree and innocent as a child and being able to roam and use his imagination freely. Um, he's, I'm going to <laughs> genderize, but seeming very, um, very much alone here. It's not like he's playing with other children, but very much alone here. Um, and time is personified in this case, but time is letting me play, right? Time let me hail and climb. Time let me play and be. And we had talked about how it just, this concept of time kind of just is there. Um, children don't realize it's going by and what's happening and what, you know, what, what's happening while they mature and age and lose their innocence. So as he gets you know, towards the end of the poem, um, this is where 
the change takes place more so um, after follow him out of grace. Nothing I cared in the lamb white days that time would take me up to the swallow throng loft by the shadow of my hand and the moon that is always rising nor that riding to sleep I should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land. Oh, as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. And this is really just that moment when he's faced with the fact that I don't have this anymore. Time is not on my side, and, and it's somewhat sombering, right? But what is the imagery of nothing I cared at my sky blue trades that time allows in all its tuneful turning? It's really pointing out that childhood is short lived. And that's an effect of the poem overall because you have to look at the whole poem to see what is being said. Okay. And then questions 17 and 18 also focusing on this poem. Um, if we look at 17, it's asking which alliter alliterative phrase from the poem creates a peaceful mood. So really focusing on the peaceful mood and the sound of the alliteration. So our first one, and the Sabbath rang slowly. B, about the lilting house as happy as the grass was green. Um, lilting happy ha house, happy in grass and green. Um, not necessarily peaceful there nightly under the simple stars and that will be our answer um it's just this usually this calming effect with night and the simple stars you're hearing that the last one just take a look at it um sang to my horn the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold definitely not really um peaceful with this with the noise there um clear and cold barking right so and that first one, we also have kind of more um, audio with the Sabbath rang slowly. So we're looking for what's going to create a peaceful mood. Now I realize that, you know, we can look at it somewhat subjectively because um, we could argue, you know, other, other times sound is kind of peaceful. So um, whenever you have questions like that, just process of elimination, try and pick the best answer. And then question 18. Um, there's a chunk of lines from the poem and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land oh as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means time held me green and dying though I sang in my chains like the sea and we're really looking at how they the lines themselves reflect the theme that happiness the happiness of childhood is fleeting and so when we think about that that word choice fleeting that it's not lasting right and this concept that the farm is forever fled from the childless land no more can i go there and be <laughs> this prince of the apple towns and all that stuff right and i was young and easy in the mercy of his means and means um, his of course is that personification of time and so in this case, our answer is B, the show that the speaker, they, sh they show that the speaker will never see the farm in the same way, it should say they, sorry, um, that he did as a child, okay? So the, the fact that childhood is fleeting and, and it's not the same, it's changed, okay? All right, if you have questions, just let me know, but those were our most missed for the Unit 4 test.